appreciate you guys having me here. And yeah. yeah, welcome. So, um, so maybe we'll just go around the horn. So, um, just to introduce ourselves. So, I I'm Damien, and um, I've been in this group for I don't know how long is it? A few months? A couple months? Maybe three? Okay. Four months? I think we started in February. Yeah, it says uh, February. February twenty fifth. It's been all right. It's been good. Yep. Um, so, and I, I co-lead the group with Sean. Maybe we'll just go around the horn. Um, sure. What is, uh, what is your name, sir? <laughs> uh, me. me? <laughs> yeah, <they don't. laughs> it's hard to tell who you're pointing at. Uh, yeah, I'm Dylan. Uh, I'm uh, met Sean a few years ago. I actually met my wife at his wedding. Okay. Uh, we go. We go back a ways. Uh, he's been he's been uh, telling me about um, certain men's groups. He told me about this group uh, a few months ago. Said so you guys do you guys meet every weekday or every single day? Every, every day. day. Yeah. Yeah. Including weekends mm -hmm. at six thirty. Yep. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I live here in Thornton. Uh, do real estate photography and uh, a little bit of, of uh, real estate agent stuff. Nice. Uh, that's that's what I do. And, yeah, I've been, I've been wanting to join a group like this for, for a little while now. Uh, it's, it's difficult navigating. The biblical text by yourself, uh, with that, as as I've learned the hard way. I'm like, man, it's like I'm uh, just a drift. So I, you know, but so I, I listen to a lot of YouTube videos and people like, talking about the Bible and, and uh, kind of bounce around that way. But Bible, Bible in a year podcast, mm -hmm. um, like that. So yeah, once again, I appreciate you guys having me in here because this, this is. Um, if you're a person that's going to take it seriously, you need to actually, you know, have a have a real group of people and real dialogue. So, oh, definitely, excited. definitely. Yeah. And you said your name was Dylan. Yes, sir. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Well, welcome. Um, yeah, I think you'll find, um, you know, in the in this group, um, navigating the Bible together is is really helpful. It's been really helpful for me. Um, just to process it together, um, and so, so yeah, I, I I hope you'll you'll really enjoy it. Thanks, man. <clears throat> Daniel, maybe you want to introduce yourself as well. I'm Daniel. I'm also a part of this group since well, my Bible says March fourth. Anyway, yeah, there you go. I'm just another resite that. Got to know these guys, so yay. Okay, you guys go to uh, that, that's same church, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Dylan, are you okay? Are you okay with this session being recorded? We've been posting our recording our sessions and posting them on YouTube. Are you cool with that? If not, it's totally okay. We can just yeah, absolutely. record, okay? Yeah, I can't okay. promise I'll have an intelligent contribution. That's fine. That. Yeah, Sean, Sean mentioned that yesterday, and that's that's fine. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, it's I, you know, it's not about um, being you know intelligent or whatever. We're just trying to. Um, I think all of us, like God, sees us as His children, and as His children, we are all learning. Um, so it's uh, there's no pressure there at all. So. Right on. All right. Well, let's uh, let's start with some prayer. I'll uh, kick us off here um, and get to the word. Lord, thanks. Um, thanks for this time. Thanks. Thank you for this day. Lord God, thank you for your word that um, you've given us this love letter. And um, we just open our ears and our hearts to you this morning to hear what you have to say to us. 
Guide us and direct us this morning, Lord. We love you. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, so usually what we do, Dylan, is we just we have a passage that we'll read a few verses, and uh, we'll read it, depending on the length of the passage, two or three times, and then just uh, talk about it. So, um, so this morning... We are reading, oh my goodness, what are we reading? I think we're reading uh, Luke chapter 22 and verses 7 through 13. Yes. I think we left off yesterday. We we did, we read 1 through 6, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So 7 through 13. So I'll read, um, and then if we could have two more people read the same passage, that'd be awesome. Uh, so then the day for the Feast of Unleavened Bread came, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, go and prepare the Passover for us to eat. They said to him, where do you want us to prepare it? He said to them, listen, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters and tell the owner of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished room upstairs. Make preparations there. Uh, make preparations there. So they went and found things just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare, prepare for it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large upper room, all furnished, make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. Yeah, let's, uh, let's maybe read one more time. Okay. <clears throat> then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? They asked. He replied, as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, all furnished, make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. All right, thank you. So what word or phrase is standing out today for you guys? I'm liking verse 11 myself only because it harkens back to what is the other one? The triumphal uh, entry <laughs> go into yeah. the village. As you enter it, you will find a colt tied there. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? The Lord needs it. <laughs> it's like, man, he 
keeps predicting that he'll be able to convince people to just lend him their stuff. Yeah, so I was... It's interesting. So do you think that Jesus is has like just physically either gone into the, you know, into Jerusalem and talked to these people and kind of prepared beforehand, or he sent one of his disciples in to talk to them, but it's not accounted for in the gospels. Or do you think that he just miraculously knows and somehow is communicating to them supernaturally, like um, what the expectation is and what the plan is? I feel like that last one, somehow he just knows. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I think that there's like a, um, like the thing with the cult, you know, the, the, the donkey, the person with the water jar. It's almost like these people that are involved in, in these scenarios, it's like they're, they have a relationship with God and they're talking with God and God's like, Hey, this is going to happen when this happens. Just do what the teacher says, or, you know, they're like, okay. And and then it happens. <laughs> when does that happen with Paul? Cause that happened with Paul too. Like they even have a recounting of it where, Hey, Saul is coming to your house. He says to, the guy. Yeah. Pray for him. Yeah. I think that's it. That's pretty awesome. Um, and, and the parallel I found between this and the triumphal entry was like, Jesus is like, and say this, you know, like you're gonna, like he gave them the words to say to be able to convince them, you know, convince the owner of the donkey and then to convince the the man who probably owns the upper room. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. the other thing that stood out to me when I read that was, was it, was it in Exodus or was it in later on in the, in the other books of the Old Testament where they said, if you have a lamb, slaughter it. If you have enough for two families, invite your neighbors over. Don't let anybody go through Passover without partaking in Passover, essentially. Mm -hmm. How, so what is the link to this? I don't understand. Well, it's like we have a teacher and his disciples that are coming through town, they have nowhere to go to Passover at. Ah, uh, I see. So it's, it's part of the tradition. It's part of the, actually the law. Right. Right. You know, something that struck me, um, in this that I'd never realized before, you know, yesterday we talked about the Passover and, you know, the original version in Exodus where you would, so each family, the head of each household would slaughter a, a, a lamb and then, and then they would eat that lamb, right. As within that household. And like you're saying, Daniel, they would, they would share it if a household didn't have a lamb or wasn't able to get one. Right. But then it, when the temple came, they would t take a lamb and they would bring it to the priests at the temple. And then the priests would sacrifice it and then give them the meat. And then they would bring that home to their family, right. And partake in the Passover meal. And so one thing is not stated here, but I think it's because it was the way the custom was that when they said, go and prepare the Passover meal, I think what would have happened was that Peter and John would have actually gone to the temple first with with a lamb the chiefs mm -hmm. the chiefs the, the priests would have slaughtered the lamb sacrificed it burnt the meat or cooked the meat and then 
given it to them and then they would have you know had to so it's interesting so they would have made a stop at the temple first and actually engaged with the priests who were about to kill Jesus <laughs> and essentially have them and the priests would would serve them by sacrificing um, the lamb um, for Jesus Passover meal I just thought that was interesting yeah I didn't even I didn't even catch that yeah it's not written anywhere but I think that would have happened right well, yeah, or like, so you're saying that, you know, it's not, it's not written, but they probably went to the, to the temple and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because, yeah, after the temple was established, Passover custom was to have the, the priests at the temple sacrifice the Passover lamb for each household, as opposed to them doing it themselves. I kind of took it as like Jesus there, you know, it's almost like his disciples were like, like we can't go to the temple. All those people want to kill you. And so that's why they're asking like, where should we prepare for this? And then he's telling them, Oh yeah, we'll just go hide out in this upper room kind of thing. Hmm. And he's like, it doesn't matter as long as we have a pass, you know, Passover lab that it'll it'll be fine. Like, just go, just go here instead of making that stop at the temple. But I don't know. So I guess the question is, was it law? Was it Old Testament law that the priests would sacrifice the lamb at the temple? Whoa. I don't know. Maybe. And if it was, yeah. I just found Deuteronomy 16, verse 5 through 7. You must not sacrifice the Passover in any town the Lord your God gives you, except in the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name. There you must sacrifice the Passover in the evening when the sun goes down on the anniversary of your departure from Egypt. Roast it and eat it at the place your Lord, the Lord your God will choose. Then in the morning return to your tents. Wow. So does that mean in the temple or does it mean... Um, well, just in Jerusalem. I don't know, but the significance I was thinking is Jesus himself chose a place to have Passover. Mm. The Lord, yeah, him being the Lord had... Of his uh, his choosing, the Lord's choosing, just like in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Um, let's see. Can I ask real quick what uh, what uh, version you guys are reading out of? What Bible version? NIV. Yep. I don't know what Damien's Mine's... reading out of. Yeah. I'm, I'm reading out of NET. I think that stands for New English Translation. Yeah, I think so. I got the King James, King James Version. That's a little difficult to... It's got a lot of old English. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Just pulled up on my iPad here. But uh, yeah, sorry. So
Yeah, I haven't read that. I've read that King James version before, but it's been a while since I've looked at it. I think it is for me. It's it's harder to understand, um, but um, I know a lot of people depend on that translation. Did you remember that that connection to Deuteronomy off the top of your head? No, it was a cross reference in the in the center oh. of the page. <laughs> That'd be impressive. Yeah, so so I just was doing a, a search in, in chat GPT on this whole thing about where the sacri- the Passover lamb was to be slaughtered. It says after the construction of the tabernacle and later the temple in Jerusalem, the laws concerning sacrificial offerings became more centralized. Deuteronomy sixteen two. That's what you read, right, Daniel? Sixteen two? Yeah, sixteen five, but sixteen two okay. Probably in okay. context. It said uh, Deuteronomy sixteen two, comma five through six speaks about slaughtering the Passover lamb at the place the Lord chooses, which eventually came to be understood as the temple in Jerusalem. Um, so while the original command in Exodus did not specify specifically require the lamb to be slaughtered at the temple, the instructions given later in Deuteronomy did. So I guess if Jesus would have interpreted Deuteronomy 16, 2, 5, and 6 as being the law, then he would have required his disciples to take the Passover lamb um, to the temple to be slaughtered. So I guess the question was, was that Jesus's interpretation as well? <laughs> or was he like, nah, that's just man's tradition. <clears throat> or if he is the Lord, he's able to choose like you said, Daniel, and it wouldn't necessarily have to be in the temple. So what do you think, what do you guys think the takeaway is for us today? I know we talked and I focused on the whole location for a good portion of our conversation, but what do you think the takeaway is? What are you hearing from God this morning? Kind of like what I was initially hearing was like like it, if if Jesus or you hear some kind of command or prompting or something to like to trust to trust Jesus and then to trust that he will give you like the words to say as well just kind of like like um what was it um Moses mm-hmm. at the burning bush um, but kind of in that, in that way, you know, cause Jesus is like, yeah, go here, you know, you'll find this guy and here's, here's what you got to say to him to, to, you know, convince him to, to let us use his room. And so it's like, to me, it was, it was just trust, like, I don't know, trust what God's calling you to do but also listen for what he's he's basically telling you to say or trust that he will tell you the words to say. Yeah, I, I like that. It's, um, yeah, that's definitely illustrated here, right? Um, he's, Jesus is in control mm-hmm. of everything going on and, and, and everything that's about to happen. Right. He's he is the lamb that's led to the slaughter and the lamb that will be sacrificed for all of our sins. And he's orchestrating everything. Um, And so, as you say, Sean, are we can be assured that he's orchestrating the things in our life um, in alignment with his will. 
and we can trust him in that. That's a great takeaway. And he'll guide us through it as well, right? Right, right. He'll give the words to speak. He'll give us the tasks to accomplish. The places to go. Mm -hmm. The things to look for. Yeah. I guess just to add on to what you say in verse 9, so, so Jesus, or in verse 8, he tells Peter and John, go and prepare the Passover for us to eat. And they could have just been like, okay, we'll figure out what you want us to do and how you want us to do it, and went and did it. But they didn't. Mm. They asked him, well, where do you want us to prepare it? How do you want us to do this? And so there's also, I guess, just adding on to what you're saying, Sean, there's also us asking, I think, the Lord, like when we get a, when we, when he gives us an instruction, it may not be completely clear how we're supposed to go about that, doing, accomplishing that. And so it's good to ask for clarification, for more information. I guess in just encouraging that dialogue. I guess that's the other thing that yeah. I'm, I'm seeing. Totally. Hmm. Yeah, it's not a it's not a one way like, oh, Jesus called me to do this. Now I got to go figure it out. And yeah. <laughs> they, they they asked. It's like yeah. And sometimes I think I get into that mindset of like. Oh, I feel like God is calling me to do this. All right, now it's on me to figure it out. Yeah. Instead of having that dialogue and being like, Jesus, like, help me. Like, what what do I do, you know? And having having that dialogue with him, yeah. Yeah, it goes back to his words. If you remain in me, I will remain in you. And so there's just this constant abiding in the Lord which is that the dialogue I think that you're talking about. Yeah. Awesome. Any, uh, any final thoughts before we close out today? Okay. Would someone like to? Oh, go ahead, Dylan. I just want to. If everybody's if everybody's done, I just want to say thanks for having me. Um, yeah. That's that's exactly why groups like this are important because I I would have read through all those passages, and missed eighty percent of the things that you guys talked about just now. So <laughs> I just wanted to say yeah. And uh, Daniel, was it? Yeah. Are you you're you're reading a Bible that has. Uh, links. Yeah. To his... How do I get one of those? <laughs> um, but, uh, I think you mentioned the NEV version, but is there is there like a specialized version with those links? No, there? it's it's well, the specialized version is make sure it's paper, because then they'll they'll put these. Just a sec, I've got a cat sitting on top of it. They'll basically put. <laughs> It's like you've got your two columns, and then right in the middle, there's a bunch of cross references, and they have oh. footnote letters, and you just, oh yeah, and right up got here it. is the Deuteronomy 16 or whatever. Got it. So I just pulled this up on my iPad, and that, yeah. that was the version. This is an IV. An IV version. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Are you using the Bible app, Dylan? I'm on. BibleGateway.com. Okay. I just I just googled when when I heard what passage you guys were. Yeah. Reading. Yeah. Just, no. And and if if you get the Bible app too, you can like change and look through all the different versions. So like if you find a version that like doesn't make sense or you don't like, you can change versions and like kind of compare. I can't remember. There was another app too. Um, 
but I'll, I'll share it with you once I remember. But there's, yeah, you can kind of read through all the different versions and kind of compare them to, which is kind of nice. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, I'll check it out. Awesome. All right, well, let's uh, let's close out in prayer. Um, someone like to close us out today? Sure. All right. Yeah. Um, dear Heavenly Father, um, we thank you for this time. Um, we thank you for um, Dylan being able to join us and his his curiosity and and all of our curiosities, Father. Um, we're just we're just eager for your word and and to learn more about it and to talk talk this through with. Um, with these brothers and with uh, um, each other so that we might just come to, to know you just a little bit more and, and to have, to have a uh, closer relationship with you. Um, thank you for this time. And I ask that uh, this word be solidified in our hearts and minds and and influence our, our actions as we go throughout our day and our interactions with other people. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. All right. Well, see you guys later. Have an awesome right. day. Have a good one. You too. See you. Later.